All right, everybody, this is Brian with Otter Creek Woodworks. This is our sense loom assembly video. You're gonna receive your sense loom in two boxes. Uh, one box is gonna contain the rails, it's gonna be a long box. The other box is gonna contain the feet, the legs, the head, and a package of bolts. This is the way it's gonna come. Uh, whenever you unpack this, just be sure and lay it all out. We'll show you in the next part of the video how to lay it out and how to assemble this thing. I want to take a minute though to thank y'all for ordering these. These have really been a good deal for us. We enjoy making them and they've been real popular. So if you have any questions or don't hesitate to holler at us or get in touch with us or email or Facebook us, uh, we're here for you if you have any questions or any problems during your assembly process. Thank you. Now that you have the bubble wrap off everything, we want to lay the parts out where they uh, make more sense for the assembly process. We have our two legs this is the taller of the two. This is a stationary leg. You can tell it because it's got the holder on top of it, okay? Now, this will make the process a little easier for you to assemble it if you'll start on this end. All the leg parts are marked. All the side parts like this is DR, ER, and FR. So I've matched those with these bottom parts, DR, FR, and ER. And the letters, when we go to put these together, will go to each other. So just be like, if, if there's a BR, then you need to match it with a BR, okay? The trick to getting this set up right is it has a mark on the bottom of the leg, D, and so does that one, and they need to turn to the outside like this. Once we get all six of these rails on, then we'll put the feet on. This is the actual feet here. These are a little bit harder to put on. There's too much to line up at times, but we'll show you a little trick to make that happen. Okay, the other thing is we've got a, a sack of bolts, parts, and an Allen wrench. This is all you need to assemble this. Now, we've got one on the drill, and we'll show you how that works, and that's just mainly to save time here on the video, but you can do it with this one just fine. If you happen to not have enough parts, if you're missing a screw or a bolt, uh, just send me an email and we'll get you one right out or if something happens to one if there's a problem Just send me an email and we'll take care of it Okay, so we'll start the assembly process. I'm gonna ask uh, Marco to help me He's gonna get on the other end because we have two people on this assembly It'll work a lot faster and a lot easier. Okay, the first thing I'll do is pick up the one that says FR I'm gonna insert the two bolts And Marco's gonna pick it up just a little bit for me so that we're close and I'm gonna start this one with a Allen wrench going to start it a little bit and I'll start the other one. Okay, let her down a little Marco. Cool. Down, 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 down. There we go a little bit. Once you get them lined up, go pretty easy. Okay, to save time on the video, we're going to be using the drill and Feel free to take the included. Take the included Allen wrench and just cut it off a little bit on your grinder or something, and chuck that up in the drill, and it worked great. Or you can just use it by hand. We're just going to try to save a little time here. All right, now Marco is going to do the other end right quick. Got it. Now the important thing about this is do not tighten them at this point. Just get everything started good. And then once they're started in there pretty good, then we'll go back and tighten everything once we get them all on there. It'll make the assembly a lot easier. Okay, now Marco's got that in. I'm gonna grab the next rail, which is ER. I'm gonna grab two of these 12 bolts that we laid out. Uh, one thing you gotta you have to check, you'll probably have to loosen this knob and raise that leg just a little bit to expose the hole, because in shipping we've got them pull down as tight as we can to save space and they may not go
Okay, now we're gonna take the last rail, which this one's marked DR, DR, two more bolts. And we're gonna I get my left hand to work again. Go ahead and put them in the holes. And line them up. Yeah, put them in that drill, they go a lot faster. If you do use a drill, we've got a D-Wall here. I suggest you set the clutch on about seven to nine, six to nine, somewhere in there to make sure you don't strip something out. Save us a little headache there, but anyway, good to go. All right, now, just for ease of showing y'all, we're gonna take a second and we're gonna flip this around so that we're not working behind it so you can see what we're doing with the other side, so. Okay. Gonna swap it around so that we have CL going to CL. Now we're gonna look for the mid rail, which on my end says BL. And since we turn the loom around, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna twist it around. So we got BL going to BL here. Marco's got his, so now we're gonna take the top rail. There again, I gotta twist it around. Make sure that we have AL and AL coming together. Elastic bolts. Stick those in. Okay, once we have the assembly to this point, uh, we need to put the feet on. Now, there's a couple of tricks to this. It's definitely a two-person process, but if you look at the feet, they are marked I think this one is marked A, and here is A. Mark over that one there should be D, and this one has D, right? The feet go on just like this, and these two back screws are the ones we want to put in first. If we'll line these up and get them loose and get them in there, then these are much easier to line up because they'll kind of pivot if you don't. If you get these in there, it'll make them hard to line up. And uh, worst case scenario, you might even take a screwdriver and kind of line this hole up that will fit in that insert. But one other thing I might mention, some of these inserts stick out just a little past the wood. Don't worry about that. When you pull it together, everything locks together good. These inserts are epoxied in. Shouldn't be any problem with those ever pulling out. But anyway, so here we're gonna go with this foot process. We're gonna slide this thing down where you can actually just see both of us working together on this one foot. Uh, Something you do need to know is the leg only comes up probably two inches from the bottom of this foot. So it actually rests on the foot, not the leg itself. So uh, you can put a couple of little blocks of two before under here or something will help line it up too if you want to do that. But anyway, we're gonna come down here, scoop this thing that way, Marco, where we can both get on it and we'll put some screws in it here. What we're going to do, we're going to take a couple scrap pieces of 2 before, and we'll probably even throw in two pieces of extra 2 before out of our scrap pile with you guys with the deal just to make this a little bit easier. So, Marco, if you will come down and pick this over here, I've got it picked up. Let's put two. That'll get us pretty close to the height we need. All right, I've got the boards for it to set on so it's up off the ground. And I got to turn around. All right, I got that screw started. I'm going to get the other one started. Now, I may have to rotate this leg up a little. You can see it's not flat. Until I find the hole. and they all lined up perfectly so this is what you want to do is we'll set them on a little block and then have somebody steady that and then put all four bolts in and we'll get the other end right quick and we'll show you how to do the top okay and the next thing we need to do is assemble the head portion okay now if you'll notice when it comes to you we have an adjustable buckle holder it's 
for small buckles and large buckles. We have them set up for the large buckles to start with. If you need to change it, I'll show you how we do that in just a second. But right now, the big pieces need to be pointing towards each other. You see it's got a big one here, big one there. So we'll just simply drop that in our slot, put our stop block underneath, wing nut on the bottom. And we're just gonna run this up till it's just snug. It doesn't have to be tight or anything right now. Okay. And this is the indexing pin. And what you'll do, and we'll show you a different view of this here in just a second, is what you'll do is line the face of this block up to the number for the length of whatever cinch you wanna make. If you got like this one, be a 14 inch cinch. We line this up and the pin should go right in the hole by this angle at the bottom of this angle now this is set up for a 14 inch cinch if we measure from the inside of that hook to there we should be real close to 14 inches if you find they're off a little bit we can simply loosen these two bolts on one head or the other and we can adjust this back and forth okay we'll get you a different view of the top and we'll show you how this looks Okay, and here's how we make our adjustments on the loom on the buckle holders. So let's say we want to ch change this buckle around. All we do is take out these two bolts. They're long because they're the same bolts used all over the machine. So. We simply turn the plate around, put our bolts back in. We'll leave them loose so we can make adjustments. All right, we're on the 14 inch loom. So what I'd want to do is take my tape and put it on the inside of that one and make sure that this lines up to the inside of my buckle holder at 14 inches like that. And then we're ready to tighten that back down and we've made the adjustment to the small holder. We just simply do the other one the same way. All right, and the last thing we need to show you is actually how the loom works here as far as uh, when you're actually making a cinch. We have a stop block underneath that you can simply turn, and this allows you to rotate the head and release the pressure off the cinch. And then when you're ready to go back, you just pop it back down and tighten that wing nut just a little bit, and it'll hold a constant pressure on it. So as you saw in Tara's video, this is the, the cool thing about this. You can release pressure and put pressure back on it as you're weaving your your cinches. Um, hope this is a good enough video to let y'all put it together. We tried to draw some instructions up, but nobody could read our writing, so we decided to do a video. But anyway, if you have any questions, call us. You got my email, you got my phone number, you got our uh, website address. Holler at us if you have any questions. If you're missing parts or anything, let us know. We'll be happy to make it right and fix it up. Also, for those of you who are getting these new holders, uh, give us some reviews on it or holler at us. Let us know how you like them, if there's something we need to do different. Um, we've also got one kind of in the works. If you're going to do a double buckle cinch, uh, let us know if anybody has a need for that. We'd be glad to make you uh, a set of those. They're going to run probably 50 or 60 bucks, but uh, we'll hold double buckle cinches for you. Just uh, shoot us an email on any questions or anything you have on it. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.